Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a keyhole buttonhole on the sewing machine. You can also do a keyhole buttonhole by hand, and if you're interested in that, perhaps I will do some hand sewing videos in the future for buttonholes. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do it on the sewing machine. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it with an automatic buttonhole function, and also with a manual buttonhole function. You can also add cord to your keyhole buttonhole, and if you're interested in knowing how to do that, please do watch my corded buttonhole tutorial. I'll pop a link to that here. So when might you need to add a keyhole buttonhole to a garment? Keyhole buttonholes are normally used on garments that are created from thicker fabric that have larger, chunkier buttons with bigger shanks. So generally they're found on outerwear, jackets and coats. The extra space that the keyhole buttonhole provides prevents the garments from sort of straining at the centre front and provides them with a little bit more strength in terms of wear as well. This is an example of a keyhole buttonhole that we're going to be completing. As you can see the majority of the buttonhole is very similar to a standard buttonhole but there is a circle or eyelet shape on the one side. This is to accommodate the larger buttons. Now, keyhole buttonholes always need to be placed horizontally on a garment, and the keyhole shape should be facing the centre front of the garment. Firstly, you need to see if your machine offers a keyhole buttonhole. On my machine, it is this picture, number 11. As with my other buttonhole videos, on my Benina machine, I'm going to take my bobbin thread and I'm going to feed it through this tiny hole in the arm of the bobbin case. And this will create a tight attention with my bobbin and it will allow the sort of beads of the buttonhole, the stitches of the buttonhole to look more pronounced. Set up your machine for the keyhole buttonhole. On my machine, it's stitch number 11. I also need to use my automatic buttonhole foot. So I need to position that onto the machine. When using the automatic buttonhole foot, you want the needle thread to be underneath the foot. Turn the handwheel towards you, one full rotation, take a pin or something and collect the thread from underneath. Position the threads to the side or back of the sewing machine. Now take your piece of fabric. Please do watch my introduction to buttonhole video first because in that video I talk about how to create the size of the buttonhole that you need to make and we talk about interfacing or stabilising your buttonholes. For this example, I'm using some stabilizer to support my fabric, but I would always recommend interfacing your fabric where the buttonholes are going to sit. Now, I have drawn my buttonhole with both the start and the end of the buttonhole using a removable pen. And the size of the buttonhole that you draw is exactly the same as a standard buttonhole. The machine will work out the extra keyhole shape for you. The process of completing a keyhole buttonhole is very similar to a standard automatic buttonhole. On the Benina machine, the same process will apply in that you only need to decide on the length of the buttonhole once and inform the machine of the length. I will show you how to do this in a second. Once the machine knows the length, it will create all of the other buttonholes exactly the same. Your automatic buttonhole might be like this or you may have to position a button into the back of it or show the screen on the machine the size of your button. I would always recommend creating a test piece prior to working on the real thing. And when you're testing, use the same thread fabric interfacing and combination of thread fabrics and interfacing that you will have on the real garment. Now I'm going to position my piece of fabric underneath the presser foot. I need to line up a few things here. The central line of the middle of the buttonhole needs to be running down the center of the foot. And when I lower the foot onto my buttonhole, I have got a tiny little sort of central marking in this plastic piece here. That needs to be sitting on the central drawn line. Now on my machine, I'm going to be sewing towards me. So I'm gonna be starting at this horizontal line here. I need to position my needle into the horizontal line. Now, depending on your machine, some machines, the needle will start in the center, so your needle will be going in where the horizontal and vertical lines meet. 
on other machines that isn't the case and your needle will already start off to the left or to one side and in that case you just need to make sure that when you turn turn the hand wheel to position the needle in and that the needle is sitting on that horizontal line and you can lift the presser foot up to take a look. Now I'm going to begin once everything is lined up and with the keyhole button hole on this banana the sewing machine is going to sew a row of stitches towards me first and very tiny little stitches. Now another benefit to this banana foot, and you will probably find it on your sewing machine foot as well, is that you have a little red gauge or guide on the side here. Now for this example I'm making a buttonhole that measures 2.5 centimetres 1 inch, so I can position the red gauge on that marking, there are measurements down the side of the buttonhole. Then when I get to the end of my vertical line, I've got my other horizontal line telling me that that's the distance my bottom hole wants to be, I can either check that the needle is going to go down into that horizontal line and you can use the hand wheel if you need to, turn the hand wheel towards you, or you can also use the little line on the side here, the little red gauge, to line up with the red marking on the plastic piece that is moving. On your machine, you'll probably have something similar on your buttonhole foot so that you can line up. Now, once you've covered the distance of the buttonhole and you're at that other horizontal line at the end, on my Benina machine, I need to press my reverse button. What this does is it informs the machine that I that, that is the length of the buttonhole. And now it will start sewing the keyhole section for me. As I said, your machine might be slightly different in how you inform it. And then you will simply continue to sew the buttonhole. It's done a small stitch around the keyhole and then it's doing the zigzag around the keyhole and the zigzag to create, or the satin stitch, to create the bead of the buttonhole on the left hand side. All you need to do is to guide the fabric through the machine. You do not want to push or pull it here, you just want to guide it through the machine to keep everything nice and straight. For the second side, the machine sewed back towards me with a small little straight stitch and then it is going to do the satin stitch for the other bead or other side of the buttonhole, again away from me. This means that both sides of the buttonhole are sewn in the same direction, which allows them to be symmetrical. When the machine gets to the end, it will sew the bar tack at the end of the buttonhole, and this machine will automatically stop when it has finished. Do try and keep a similar speed, and don't try and sew buttonholes too fast. I find that that gets the best results. And there you have your keyhole buttonhole. Now once you've completed your buttonholes, you are going to want to tidy the threads away and you're also going to want to cut them. Now you can simply cut the threads nice and close, usually they're pretty secure. But if you're worried about this, then I would recommend threading them through with a needle towards the wrong side of the garment. On the wrong side of the product, you can tie the threads together. And then you can either trim the threads or you can re-thread the needle and thread the threads back up through the wrong side of the buttonhole if you want to really secure this. Once you're happy, you can remove the stabilizer if you've had to use some stabilizer and that is your keyhole buttonhole. I want to show you on some machines how you can amend how close together the satin stitch is on the keyhole buttonhole. Here is the keyhole buttonhole on this machine. I have the ability to amend the length of the stitches, to increase the length and decrease the length. I also have the ability to amend the width of the stitches. I even have the ability on this machine to amend the width of the gap in the middle of the buttonhole to create a larger gap or a smaller gap. If you're unable to amend the length of the stitches on your keyhole buttonhole, then you can actually stitch on top of the keyhole buttonhole to make it appear more pronounced. This is great if you're working with very thick or heavier fabrics. When you have finished sewing the keyhole buttonhole, do not remove the fabric from the sewing machine, simply start sewing again and then you will be stitching directly on top of the original buttonhole. And there you have it, that is a double stitched keyhole buttonhole. And I think this looks really nice.
Perfect if you're unable to amend the settings on your sewing machine to increase the length of the individual stitches. Remove the buttonhole from the sewing machine, tidy the threads and cut as normal. To cut this, I would recommend using a buttonhole cutter and a circular buttonhole cutter for the point or the circle of the keyhole. And I show you how to do this in my introduction video. To complete a manual keyhole buttonhole, you are going to need to position on the manual buttonhole foot. This is number three on my Benina. Both my needle and my bobbin thread are underneath the foot towards the side or the back of the sewing machine. I'm going to need to pick the keyhole buttonhole stitch on my machine, which is number 11. And I have also drawn my buttonhole onto my fabric with a removable pen. You're going to want to draw the central line of the buttonhole and the horizontal starting and ending point when you are doing a manual buttonhole. The size that you draw for a keyhole buttonhole is exactly the same as for a standard buttonhole. And if you'd like to learn more about this, then please watch my introduction to buttonholes video. Now I need to line everything up and you're going to want to line up your central line of the buttonhole, the vertical line, in the centre of the foot. The horizontal line needs to, when you position the needle down, to turn the handle towards you to position the needle down, that needs to go onto the horizontal line. Now on your machine, your needle may go into the centre where the horizontal and vertical lines meet, it may not, it may be off to one side slightly. The most important thing is that the horizontal line, the needle needs to be positioned down onto that, and the vertical line or the central line of the buttonhole needs to be straight and central in the foot. Once you're ready to sew, you can begin. I would recommend doing a practice sample, as with all buttonholes, practice this prior to doing it on the real garment. And the first side is going to do, just like with the automatic keyhole buttonhole, it's going to do a sm little small stitch towards you. When you reach the horizontal line at the end, you are going to press the reverse button. Make sure that you're really accurate with this. So if you're not confident with your machine, then use the hand wheel, turn the hand wheel towards you, and the machine will do a stitch. Once you've reached the horizontal line at the end of the buttonhole, press the reverse button. The machine will now stitch the keyhole section for you and then it will continue sewing the bead up the left hand side of the buttonhole. Now once you get back to the start of the buttonhole you're going to need to press the reverse button again and now the machine will start to sew the other side of the buttonhole for you. It's going to sew a tiny little stitch towards you and again, once you reach the horizontal line at the end of the buttonhole, you're going to press the reverse button and the machine will sew the bead back towards the start of the buttonhole. Once you get to the starting point of the buttonhole, you're going to press the reverse button again and it will sew the bar tack at the end of the buttonhole and stop sewing when it's finished. And there you have it. That is your manual keyhole buttonhole. As with before, you need to tidy the threads and you obviously need to cut this. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you now know how to do a keyhole buttonhole.